The Petroleum Local Content and Local Participation Regulation 2003 LI 2204 became a law on November 20, 2013. It brought a lot of hope to many Ghanaians and received broad endorsement from many indigenous companies as it represented not only the best chance of ensuring increased Ghanaian participation in the oil and gas sector but more importantly the country's best hope of effectively integrating the sector into the rest of the national economy. Assessing the five years of the local content ally, the Natural Resource Governance Coordinator at the Friends of the Nation, Solomon Kusi Ampofo says, the purpose of the ally to promote value addition and job creation through the use of local expertise, goods and services in the petroleum industry value chain has been average. The regulation set a target of 50% achievement in terms of goods and services by five years. It also sets targets for recruitment and training, looking at the, the management staff of all the oil and gas companies should have at least 50 to 60 percent being Ghanaians by the fifth year. It also sets another target to, to look at um, technical core staff, which is also have a target of 50 to 60 percent being Ghanaians, then other staff um, being 90 percent of Ghanaians. If you look at these, then we must say that five years on, if I achieve average, but there is more, uh, there is more room for uh, improvement. Local support service providers like Amaja Oil Field, however, have over the years given a good account of themselves in key services for various oil fields. Amaja has been in the forefront of local content. Our purpose is to build local companies, local, local talents. We are providing various services within the industry. We, we have a welding and fabrication shop. We have a machine shop, which is our flagship uh, company. That does all the trading and, um, of the pipes that go offshore. After five years of the local content LI implementation, 60 to 50% of Ghanaians must be seen playing key roles within the oil and gas sector. And I'm here at uh, Amaja uh, Group's work workshop where we have Ghanaians uh, doing critical work. And I have this officer here to tell me what exactly he does here. I'm a CNC machine operator and uh, I've been working here for the past five years. Uh, basically what I do is um, I'm in charge of the CNC machine. When the, the tools come, we do our assessment and based on the standards we work on them. We do, basically we do repairs and manufacturing as well. So what sort of repairs and manufacturing do you do and how is that linked to the oil and gas sector? Uh, what we do is we work on the, the pipes, especially the threaded ends. We you mean the pipes for the oil and gas at drilling? Exactly, for drilling. Though Amaja is making some strides, Mr. Bwabin feels the local content implementer needs to find ways to make joint ventures favorable to local service providers. What we expect the PC to be doing going forward in, in what they have already done so far, in addition to what they've already done so far, is possibly to train the local companies on in how to manage the joint venture companies. Because you, it, it seems to be that um, majority of the foreign companies come and they, when they, even when they have formed a joint venture company, they feel it's a branch of their, their mother company. So they would want to run the joint venture company as a branch. Yeah. Solomon Kusi Ampofu believes these concerns could be addressed by the expected establishment of the local content committee and local content fund by the Petroleum Commission Act and the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act. The, the function of the committee is to oversee the implementation of local content regulations and the fund is to provide financial resources for Ghanaians, and I repeat, Ghanaians to be able to develop the necessary capacity uh, to participate. But as of now, we, are, we don't have enough information about the local content fund, um, what has accrued so far, and also who are the beneficiaries. I think these are questions that we also need to ask the Petroleum Commission to provide us details as to the status of local content fund, because five years after the um, formulation of the, of the, or the passage of the local content regulations. We need to have details. And I think um, with the establishment of an office of the Petroleum Commission in the Western region, it provides the opportunity to revamp the enterprise development 
um, centre and provide the necessary technical, human and, and also financial resources to provide that level of, of training. So I believe that the EDC should be um, revived to, to bridge the gap in terms of uh, competence and also training of Ghanaians in the oil and gas industry. Halakin Oil and Gas, on the other hand, is an expatriate fabrication service provider for most of the major petroleum field and says it is committed to local content demands on school transfer. Our total workforce at present is 120 people, which 96% of our employment is Ghanaian and 4% are non ghanaian at the moment. And as far as technology transfer, Harlequin have had a policy and a philosophy of spending time in training our local Ghanaian workforce. Through this, we have to invest. If investment on hardware and equipment is not where one sees investment. The investment is in the people that operate such equipment. So what you see behind me is the evidence of technology transfer that Halokin Oil and Gas has taken upon itself to make sure that these Ghanaians don't live here with the same skill that they came with. And we are here to talk to one or two of them to actually find out the kind of skill set that they came with and what uh, level they've been taken to as we speak. I joined Halokin straight from Polytechnic. So I knew, all I knew was uh, only paperwork, abstract stuff we learned in the classroom. I took the practicals from Harlequin, uh, i.e. the machining, doing measurement, precision measurement, doing post-world treatment, welding activities. I learned all this stuff from Harlequin. Proud to the passage of the local content law, salary disparities between local and expatriate workers was an issue. But has the situation improved since? As a union, we, we are happy that um, Ghanaian employees are uh, having a chance to work in the oil and gas sector, um, both the, the midstream, downstream, and the upstream. But the question is, are they being treated fairly? Uh, it's, it's a million dollar question that needs to be answered by the Petroleum Commission. Um, we have employees who are working with expatriates, the same qualification, the same level of skill there, the same work, but the expatriates are being paid far, far, far higher. In some cases, by 20 times, 25 times better as compared to the Ghanaian employee. What is the Petroleum Commission doing about this? We have recently, um, you have a chopper that fell into the sea and Ghanaians lost their life what has happened to those families or the employees who lost their lives? Has there been any compensation paid to them? So what is the Petroleum Commission doing about it? Let's look at the ongoing um, project at Sanzile, um, which, of course, ENI is in charge. A gentleman, an erector, so to speak, lost his eye because an unprofessional doctor prescribed a medicine that is not meant for eye to be put on the eye, and the gentleman has lost his eye. What is being done about those issues? So, Petroleum Commission, we, we entreat you as a union, take up these this issues, and then discuss it at the on, oncoming forum that we are going to have, and then make sure that these issues that we are bringing to you is, is dealt with. In fact, Ghanaian employees are losing so much here in the sector. What you see over there being lifted into the ship is a suction pile fully manufactured by Ghanaian technicians and currently being transported to the 10 oil field for oil and gas production. Though it is a significant achievement we're celebrating, it is also a sad case that the very own Ghanaian technicians who actually manufacture this suction pile are not fairly treated and sometimes victimized for speaking out. For City News, I am Akwesi Jernim, Takrade.